Welcome to episode 200. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this show today, but one thing's for certain, if we're going to have any fun with this thing, I better drink some more coffee, hey? Ugh! What did you put in this? All right, after scratching my head a number of times, I've come up with the best way to do a 200th episode. I'll start with a brief history of how the show came to be, and then we will build our own custom Linux distribution the easy way. How does that sound? Now, I have always had a passion for computers. I mostly, most of the years I was using Windows and that sort of thing, but early in 2011, I decided to give Linux another try. I've, tried, I've carried distributions of Linux in my toolbox for years, but never really wanted to use Linux as a main operating system, mostly because there would be one or two little kinks that didn't seem to work out for me. And it was because of the Oz GUI tech show that I discovered on the internet one day while doing a search that he had a show that was focused on Linux Mint. And uh, I'd never heard that heard of that distribution before, so I decided to install it on my computer, and it had exceeded my expectations. Everything worked right out of the box, and I had never seen a Linux distribution do that before. And it was because of Oz GUI, his influence gave me the inspiration to start Spatry's Cup of Linux. Like the phoenix coming out of the ashes, I'd love to see you come back, Tim. I would like to take this moment to also recognize and thank the following show hosts for their contributions to the Linux community and for helping influence my transition from Windows to Linux. And in no particular order, I'd like to thank This Week in Linux, Nixie Pixel, Infinitely Galactic, Total OS Today, ICOS, and Linux for You and Me. Keep up the good work, folks. As some of you may know, I used to work in cable access television as a volunteer. And I've made a number of shows and that sort of thing, but I was always the behind-the-scenes guy. I was never one to sit in front of the camera, for obvious reasons. I'm absolutely nuts! There's an old saying that goes, we keep what we have by giving it away. And I wanted to contribute something back to the Linux community for what they have freely given to me. Hence, Spatry's Cup of Linux was born. I am truly pleased with the level of success that this show has seen in such a short period of time. I would like to take this time to thank all of my contributors and subscribers. It is your comments and feedback that really keep this show alive. Thank you, all of you, for your support. All right, now with all of that out of the way, let's get into our tutorial, shall we? All right, lights, camera, action! All right, let me show you how to make a Linux distribution the easy way. Now, uh, this is SUSE Studio, and you can easily access this website by visiting SUSEstudio.com. All right, and signing in is easy if you already have a social networking site account, such as from Novell, Twitter, Google, Facebook, Yahoo, or OpenID. I'll use my Google account here to sign in. All right, and this is a pretty neat website. I haven't seen any others quite like this. Now, once I'm logged in, you'll see that I've already created a Linux distribution called Spatry's Cup of Linux, and we're going to look at that later on in the show. But what you would basically do is you just go in and create a new appliance. All right, and then you select pretty much whatever you want. Do you want the just enough? OS, a server, a minimal X environment, which uses ICE window manager, 
you could go with GNOME or KDE4. Why don't we select KDE4 for laughs and giggles on the last one, on the one that I'm going to review, I'm going to, why don't we select no. All right, now, and then you select a 32 or 64-bit architecture. I selected a 32-bit architecture for running in the virtual machine. And then, of course, you can name it to whatever you want to. You just select create appliance. And then once that appliance is created, then you get the options of adding the software that you want to it. You can even remove some of the branding if you wish, as there is a listing that will appear on the screen. Now, obviously, things are going a little slowly right now because uh, I'm uh, running a webcam and that sort of thing. And for some reason, this likes to eat up a lot of CPU in the web browser. But you can see they have uh, GConf2 branding, open sort, open SUSE. They have, you know, you can actually click an X to remove these. I'm not going to do that right now. And then there are software packages that you can choose to install. Currently, our size is at 340 megabytes. But the more you add, the more that uh, it's going to be. And for instance, what I did was I uh, added all recommended software by selecting always install recommended software going back into the groups and then you can search for specific packages that you want, for instance, such as Abbey Word. And it will then uh, give you that give you that item. You can go ahead and add that. And it will also select any of the program's dependencies. All right, and pretty much you just go through the list. There are all of these to choose from. Add whatever you want uh, to your distribution, and then you'll move forward into the configuration tab where you will then go into your general preferences. Now, obviously, this is a live CD that it's creating that you're going to actually be able to install. So you can configure this however you want to. You can, uh, for root, you can assign your root password, the username, for instance, the example given here is Tux, and then Linux is the password. Okay, and then, of course, you can even add new users if you wish to your mix. Then the fun part is personalizing. What I did was I just went ahead and uploaded my own logos. And uh, for instance, I created my own sticker. And while that's loading, I'm going to go and grab the background as well that goes with it. And then you just pretty much select what you want and you'll see a you'll see a representation in the view here actually that kind of looks nice I don't really have to use the image uh, that I supplied uh, that I just tried to upload here as it looks like it is behaving a little bit slowly here and I want to zip this right along because we're gonna have a look at this distribution okay and then of course uh, in desktop, you can specify other options. You can automatically have Tux log in, but then root is not allowed. Uh, you have other appliance options, so if you want to just make this an image for your virtual machine, you can do this here. Additionally, you can add other scripts that uh, can be run, such as have a specific script run at the end of the build or run a, run a special script whenever the appliance boots. Okay, and then uh, we can go into files. You can upload any specific files that you need to have your dis need to have for your distribution. I didn't actually do that. And then moving right along, you select the default format, and you can select any one you want. I selected the live CD ISO image, and then you press build, and it will build it up for you. And then at that point. Once the build is finished, and it can take any uh, length of time from a half hour or longer because obviously the server is actually creating this, then at that point you will be able to run a test build and be able to test your install right within the browser. How neat is that? When you test drive a uh, distribution that you made, obviously it's not going to have the 3D support and that sort of thing, but this gives you a chance to see exactly what it is you built and uh, modify it, 
play with it, that sort of thing. Okay, well, you really can't modify it. You'd have to go back. But here we go. We have the Spatry's Cup of Linux distribution, and it's running right now within the web browser. Pretty neat, huh? And using the graphics and everything that I had specified. Now, there is a little bit of a lag with this and that sort of thing, but the thing is you'll at least get an idea of uh, what it is that you get with this. It is really nice, though, because now you can build your own distribution that suits your needs. You can have whatever programs that you want, and nothing more, nothing less for the most part. Similar to uh, what you do with an Arch build, I suppose. Um, but it is branded with SUSE Studio. Now, um, it appears this might take a little while to load, so I'm going to pause the video for a moment. All right, and as I stated, you can see that we don't really have the 3D acceleration and that sort of thing. You know, it is a little bit laggy following the mouse and that sort of thing, but at least you get a chance to see what your distribution looks like. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this, and you can see pretty much this is what I built. Um, I've got a nice uh, array of accessories, games, graphics, and you can see it, it is a little bit laggy here. Um, internet applications, office suites, sound and video, system tools, universal access, and uh, other items as well, uh, which is pretty neat. And uh, all in all, this is a cool little tool for making your own spin. You can add your own graphics and that sort of thing. So, all in all, this looks like a lot of fun. Now, uh, I did download some other ISO images that I created just to play around with it, and then I came up with this one as my final build. For those of you who would like to try my final build, please click the link in the show notes. It'll take you to this page where you can download a 32-bit ISO image, or you may test drive it in your web browser. If you thought this was useful, please comment and subscribe. Google+, Plus, Facebook, and Twitter will keep you up to date every time I send a new episode up. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.